Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club. Today we are going to discuss a movie. Um, I forgot how it's called. After Dark, right? 2013, I guess. After the Dark. Yeah. Okay, a new one. But uh, you know, this, um, this movie <laughs> caused me a huge amount of irritation when I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> close to the middle when they start to be a woke movie you know when they started to teach us how engineers are useless and why opera signals are going to rebuild the world i felt irritation and i lost the track of the movie so you have to help me to to restore the, problem. <laughs> <laughs> restore the track of it okay so what do you think we have a, a few options today we have a, some notes wrote written by teacher lee i guess we can read them or we can Try to, you know, to to re, to retell the story by ourselves. What do you prefer, Sergey? What what would you like? I don't know what. What do you prefer? Okay, both options works. Okay, let's start from. Let, let's try to retell this. If you stuck stuck at some moment, we we can. Read. You can also share the document on your screen, Ivan, and we can just yep. use it as talking points. Okay, let me do this. It's it's up to you. Okay, let me do this. The only problem when I share screen, I don't see the chat. Don't forget about this. So okay, you, okay. you have to wave your hands or something <laughs> if you want me <laughs> to give you a word. Okay, so I'm going to share notes. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, can you see them? Yes. Okay, but let's try to start by our own. So, Sergey, could you please start? What was the set of the movie? The beginning. In an international school in Jakarta, a philosophy class is having its last session. But I, I, I hear, I hear my voice. Echo. Echo. We have echo. Yeah. Please. I think, the, I think yeah. Vasant has the echo problem. I'm not sure. Vasant, are you muted? Yes, I'm muted, but I can also hear the echo. Okay, so something else. All right. Okay, let's blame Layla. Layla, could you please mute for a moment? Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> the professor challenges 21 graduate seniors to select 10 who would take shelter underground for one year and then emerge to rebuild the human race following a nuclear attack. The students are each provided varying attributes, skills, and professions that, my, that may or may not uh, be deemed as valuable in a reforming society one year following the attack. While the professor uh, and individual students may have different options regarding which skills and talents may be of the most value during the year underground and uh, in rebuilding society after the year. One pivotal one pivotal, one pivotal and timeless questions is addressed, which is more available to individuals and the society as a whole, art or science? Yeah, good question. So, Sergey, may I ask you why we call them 21 graduating seniors? Why we call them seniors? Seniors, it's a, I think that's a, it's a future managers, maybe, maybe it's a, a uh, last courses, students. Before yeah. Yeah, probably it's a, a class before graduation, right? A course before graduation. Correct. And hi they're high school students because they're going to college next year. Mm -hmm. So in high school, just like in college, the first year in high school, we call them, uh, well, in high school, we don't really have a name for, in high school, the 11th grade, we call juniors. Mm -hmm. And the twelfth grade we call seniors. I, I remember so, there was a word sophomore or something like this. In in college ah, we have cool. four years, mm -hmm. so we call them freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. But in high school we mainly use just juniors and seniors. I see. I see. Okay, so rebuilt human face from nuclear attack. I don't know. Sure. So okay. World War Three, basically. Basically. Now, okay. my first question was, who would waste nuclear bombs on Jakarta? <laughs> <laughs> on Indonesia. 
<laughs> yeah, who cares? <laughs> well, I, I read one article and they say that New Zealand and Indonesia in general, the most safe place in the world in terms of World War Three, because no one will bomb them because there is no reason for this. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> okay, uh, okay, Jihan, may I ask you, what is pivotal question? One pivotal and timeless question. Um, it's the main question uh, that is being discussed by everyone. Mm -hmm. And what is pivot in general? So we had like a story um, has a pivot. It's like the center point. Mm -hmm. Rotating point, right? So everything yeah. is like rotating around it, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, what do you think about this professor? Was he smart? <laughs> mm, I don't know exactly, but he seemed like crazy. He's doing just what he think about. Um, he take his own steps without asking the others, uh, as what he did when he killed the poet. Yeah, in, in our chat, you know, in our pre-warm session, Gerard addressed him as a Mm, sociopath, right? Sociopath. What what does okay. it mean, Jihan? Sociopath. What does it mean? Um, um I think um, he do, he don't like to be a social person. Yeah, Maybe. could be. He he like breaks the rules of social 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 right? How we call it? Mm -hmm. Society, I guess. Social norms, yeah. Social norms, yeah. So he doesn't care about these norms, right? He makes his own. Yes. And I remember Teacher Lee talk about um, the expression group thing. Can we consider Zimit as a group thing? Because he don't take feedback from others. No, nah, that's well, one person can't be group think. Mm, okay. He's just an asshole, a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, we would, I would say he's clearly very smart, but we would say he has a character flaw. There's a there's a problem up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to this uh, thought experiment. So I would call them mental experiments. Actually, what is the better thought? We call them thought experiments. They're thought. they're not real. They're just you think about it. It's like yes. a hypothetical, imaginary experiment. <laughs> okay, we can't sure. really do it. We can't really do it. So. <laughs> Yeah. I understand it. Gerard, could you please uh, explain us what is infinite monkey theorem? What does it mean? Infinite, infinite monkey. Yeah. First one, number A. Infinite monkey theorem. Ah, okay. Yeah. The monkey that is has a typewriter machine. And he's typewriting all the time in the infinite. And then so he could, with enough time, he eventually would be able to write all the Chespier <laughs> writings, I think. This is. Do you think design, it, she, she could, she, uh, he could write anything or everything. Do you think it's uh, about right or not? Yes, infinite is infinite. So <laughs> if you have infinite time, eventually. <laughs> but it's hard to... Yeah, I, so, uh, and the kid I thought was very good. He said, it's a mathematical probability. It's not really realistic. It'll never happen in our lifetime. But over, you know, billions of years with 10 to the 100th power, uh, you know, typing sessions, one of those is likely to be the, sh the works of Shakespeare, you know. <laughs> well, the theory of prob probabilities, it's interesting, you know, the monkey can do this from the first attempt. It's possible. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, highly, un highly unlikely, right? <laughs> it's, r it's randomized, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think people have this like kind of I don't know uh, things to ponder about infinite monkey theory? What they trying to to like? Why they think about this process in these terms? So I I may, maybe it's a like a strange question, but you know when I was a student in 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 mass um, in theory of probability, I've heard about this, and I think it's uh, an experiment you know, like a mental model. To show you that humankind, humans don't understand like the notion on, of infinite process. So it's hard to understand something that lasts for infinite or that like huge like a universe or something. So people 
uh, always make mistakes when they think about such things. For instance, yeah. I was going to say it's it, it teaches us to think about probabilities and likelihoods. For example, what are the chances a big meteor is going to hit our little tiny rock in space and cause a planetary disaster? You know, that'll never happen. Well, it did happen 65 million years ago. So when you look at probability over uh, billions of years, anything can happen, you know? Yes, so exactly. it, it's just a, a way of thinking outside the box, if you will. Yeah, yeah. so it's a good idea to, to make this experiment like, you know, to show, to present a case which uh, seems to be highly <clears throat> unlikely, right? But when you multiply this by infinity attempts, okay, it will happen. So for sure, <laughs> interesting, interesting idea. Okay, what about second one? Vasan, could you please explain us the trolley problem? The trolley problem, yeah, uh, the trolley problem is uh, is based on the arithmetic calculation. What will anyone do uh, if someone is uh, buying in front of a running train, but he has an option to change the track, which leads to uh, one person. So uh, instead of five person. Which one you choose? Kill, uh, let the train kill five people, or just uh, change the track to kill one person in order to save the five, so something like that. Uh, it's based on the arithmetic. Preference. Do you remember we, we discussed this uh, on the last class, I guess, right? In, in the I'm mother or something. It was it was there in a, in other form. And in this movie, there were exactly, uh, actually, there were two trolley problems, right? One is when everyone is attached to the rails, and another one when you have to push one <laughs> fat guy uh, under the tram. So do you think these cases are different, for something? These two cases, oh, uh, you know? Do, do, do you think that they are different? Um, uh, no, no, they are all the same. <laughs> Well, one of the students disagreed, right? One of the students said, I'd pull the lever, but I wouldn't push a person. That's murder. Yeah. But you're doing the same thing. But it's 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 not the same, right? In the second case, this uh, fat, fat guy, he's not risking his life at all, right? He was just a random observer or something, but you pushing him inside. Yeah, but on the track, you've got one person or five people. Yeah. So by pulling the lever, you're still killing the one person. He's just tied down instead of standing there. He didn't volunteer either. He's tied down. He didn't volunteer to die for the five people. The fat guy didn't volunteer either. But the, the point is, in the first case, you pull a lever. It's not personal. You're mm -hmm. not seeing yourself hurt someone. You're just pulling a lever. In the second case, you cause directly cause the death of someone so it's more a moral issue in the second case yeah i also see a small difference that uh, in the first case you don't choose a person at all so it's already attached to the rail uh, in yeah. the second case you can you can you, you choose a person actually you you're going to <laughs> select one who is going to die <laughs> it's kind of yes right? and, and it's uh, go ahead i have an analogy a, a real analogy you know in case, uh, you know, uh, they need to kill a person, it's easier to do with a drone rather than with a gun, you know, personally. It's much easier. <laughs> okay. You push the button and the drone machine guns the guy dead. But you get a machine gun, you don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's ask an expert. Leila, what do you think? To kill a, a guy with a knife is uh, <laughs> harder than with a gun? It's not possible for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad joke, Leila, of course. But what do you think about this trolley problem? Should we like interfere? Should we um, touch this leverage or push the guy to save people, or we shouldn't? I mean, it, won't, it depends on the situation. You know, as a mother, if I see a child is in danger, yes. But uh, I understand that we can, you know, simplify the question for us by adding like more uh, 
uh, circumstances, you know, so there is a guy who I know or something, but in general, you know, there is a four random guys and one random guy, you don't know any of them. I, I just can't stand seeing any other people to be killed. The, the, the point is, though, Layla, is if you had a small child tied on one track and five adults on the other track and you could choose which track the train would go on, would you sacrifice five adults to save one child? That's the, the moral issue I, It's here. such a difficult decision. You have to it's, be such a good decision maker on the spot. I mean, it's but pretty, it's, I pretty sim it's pretty simple to me. Yeah. Mm. What would uh, you do, Teacher Lee? What would you do in the same situation? All things being equal, I would kill one to save five. So this Anything, is logic. It's logic. Anything else makes no, without knowing who the people are, that's the only decision you could make, in my opinion. Okay, let, let, let's call this for a bit, uh, Jar. You know? Yeah, you know, during the pandemic, you know, uh, there was not enough room on the hospitals and people from all people <laughs> has been you know has yeah. been the yeah. health assistant so but doctor had to choose right the young had to was... choose between younger people who had more probability just to survive rather than to older people and then everybody complained okay uh, you know the poor older all the older eldest people you know but they couldn't give attention to everybody so they have to do a, take a, deci a decision yeah so it, it was hard but you know there is a, one difference you know sometimes for instance in russia these doctors they have like legal obligation so it's there is a law that say that you have to uh, choose a person who has more chances mm -hmm. so it's just a law so they don't break anything when they do this you know so they have no moral issues at least they should not uh, have them so it's i think uh, simpler the task for them but i don't know about other countries Notice the, the professor made the, the problem a little easier. It wasn't a beautiful woman or a child you push onto the track. It was a fat guy. <laughs> yeah. And if it, if it were a fat North Korean guy, right, it will be much easier. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, oh, but my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but remember Petra. Petra is the blonde liberal student right the best the a plus the best student in the class she said they're both wrong i wouldn't kill the one i wouldn't kill the five well that's not a realistic answer because you've got to yeah. pick a or b you can't not pick the train is coming you have to pick but you just said i wouldn't choose it's wrong that's a typical liberal answer in my opinion i just no. refuse to see what's happening you know <laughs> <laughs> give me another world and then i will decide so not not yeah. with this one yeah i understand this yeah. okay so let, let me ask you another thing you know uh so as to, do you remember the, our last class so in our last class teacher lee said that there are, there are three aspects of this problem right so legal logical by law by logic and by what was the, the moral? ethical right? moral or ethical yeah, ethical, moral, legal, yeah. and logical. Yeah. Yeah. So three different uh, um, ways, right, to see to see the problem. So teacher Lee just presented the logical way of thinking about this, right? So four is is greater number than one. So why do you care, right? Just choose. What about legal case? What do you think? What is uh, so if I'm touching this leverage, am I becoming a killer? <laughs> so because I interfere to the process, what do you think? Sergey, what do you think? If I if I touch this, uh, you know, leverage. So am I become from the legal point of view? For both uh for both uh, cases, you will be a killer. Uh it's a it's a, it's a reality, but uh, you have to have uh choice. <laughs> but uh, so, if, but if if I if I don't touch if I don't touch anyone, so I just stay and watch it. By legal point of view, am I a killer? Uh, for <laughs> for uh, for a liberals, it's a good way. I agree. No. With you. <laughs> no. 
But I, it's not my deal. I, I close my eyes and I close my hair. Uh, okay, it's a good way. But uh, following the uh, logical and uh, legal way, you have to have choose. And you have one uh, one person and four person. But uh, it's not it's not difficult. One person uh, kills better than four person. But if you add uh, some emotional aspects, you have a lot of problem. No, Sergey, you know, you know what, what I mean? So if you don't touch anything, the tram just kill four people, right? You did not touch anything, you just stay and watch. So four people died, but you not a killer, right? From a legal point of view. You did not do anything. You just was a, no, an observer, right? No, uh, we don't have uh, a lot of information about the situation. Maybe you are a worker of railway and you have to have choice. Mm. Maybe, I don't know. There are, the laws vary by country, Ivan. So you've got to pick a country because your laws may be different than our laws. If we stand by and allow something to happen and someone dies and we do nothing, legally, we're not required to do anything. But morally, people would expect us to step in and save someone. Exactly, exactly. It's what, it's what, uh, it was my question, actually. It was, was I trying to make a segue? So in Russia, we have a law. So, and law tells me what, uh, tells me what? If I'm trained to save people, let's say I'm a doctor or I'm an emergency service, service officer or something like this, then I have an uh, obligation by law to save people. If I don't do this, I'm a criminal. But if I'm just a citizen and I, do, I, I decide to do nothing, I'm not a criminal. So it's my choice by, by law. So it's, it's like written in our law. But what about your countries? What do you think? America used to have what we call a good Samaritan law. We still have it. We have a good Samaritan law. And what that says is if you see someone that's dying or about to die, uh, in the old days, you know, people would step in and help, be a good Samaritan. I'll step in, I'll help you, I save you. But later, what happened, the victim that got saved turned around and sued that person for money because they didn't save them enough or they ended up crippled or disabled and they blamed the person that saved them. So after that, Good Samaritans quit saving people. So finally, we had to pass a Good Samaritan law that says if you step in and help someone and save their life, you as a Good Samaritan cannot be sued by that person. So that kind of encouraged people to start saving people again. But in some countries, if a foreigner saves a, a poor person, the poor person will turn around and sue the wealthy, the wealthy foreigner, and that's legal in their country. In fact, they all do it. So in a lot of foreign countries, foreigners won't help anybody because they know if they step in and get involved, they will be sued for a lot of money because they're rich and they can afford to pay the poor victim. So it, it, it depends. Yeah. Teacher Lee, can I ask something? Mm -hmm. You see, laws are different from, you know, just culture by culture. Every country has different ideas about it. For example, you said a trained first responder must save people, right? I'm not Russia. a trained person. Uh, just think that I'm only an onlooker, right. right? You're not. You're not right. You're not required. Okay. This is talking about firemen, policemen, ambulance people, people that are trained to save lives must save lives by law. They can't show up at an accident and say, "I don't want to get my hands bloody," you know. Okay. <laughs> if I do interfere, what will happen? It depends on the country. Okay. In Thank Asian you. countries, in Asian countries, the poor people will always sue the rich people. <laughs> it doesn't matter okay. if you're good or bad. They just want to get your money. Okay. Yeah. Well, so what about uh, your country? So if I see someone dying and I am just a citizen, you know, I am not required to come. I'm, I'm not a policeman. Uh, will I like risk uh, to be a crime if I just 
well, don't help. Uh, no, uh, you are allowed to help them and the law protects the uh, witness uh, who are uh, the good Samaritans. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but if so I, they, my, my question is opposite. If I decided not to help, am I in danger? So I, I see someone is dying, but I not, do not go into hell because I'm, I don't know, scared. I understand, sir, but it's common. Uh, we have seen so many cases here. Yeah. After the internet arrived, everybody mm -hmm. has a mobile phone. If some road accident happens, they just take photos and share it. Yeah. And the social yeah. network platforms, yeah. <laughs> it happens. Uh, so many medias, uh, the print media and digital media bashed their behavior, but Still, people don't change. They, they yeah, want no to. one, no one helps. They just all pull out their cell phones and start filming. Wow, look yeah. at that person dying! Wow, he's almost dead. He's about to die. <laughs> you know. But I, I think, yeah, I think this is what uh, makes the world run. You know, uh, yeah. because un unless they are not physically involved, they don't think they are. Uh, they are the uh, criminals, or they are the perpetrators. Uh, just like we, we eat chicken and everything, but only the poultry shop uh, kills the chicken. You know? uh, but we eat the chicken, so it doesn't affect us. Uh, we yeah. don't feel like we are killers. I, re I remember in my office uh, there was a big uh, sign telling us that in case of fire, uh, first leave the building and tweet about this after, not uh, in opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jihan, I, I forgot from what country you are. So, what, what about your country? Will be it legal to leave someone who needs help? Okay, um, I'm from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, and regarding the law, I don't know the answer, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but from the public perspective, usually people will help because it's uh, part of their morals. Mm, and maybe that's an enough reason, I think because we are human, so we have to help, and not just run away. Yeah, I see, but teacher Lee, yes. Something to be aware of, and this happens in America, as well as Asian countries, China in particular, is you'll see cases where, uh, let's say three people are beaten up on a woman. Some people are afraid to get involved and everyone will stand there and just watch it happen. Sometimes a good Samaritan will try to get involved and will try to save someone, but they themselves get beat up by those three thugs and they end up dying. So you have to be careful what you're getting involved in because sometimes you may end up getting killed yourself. Whereas if you had not got involved in a deadly or dangerous situation, you would have been unharmed. Yeah, well, that's the interesting part. That's the part that's uh, most interesting for me. So if you decide not to interfere, right? Are you in any danger, but any different, you know, laws? Because if yeah. you decide to interfere, it's understandable. You're taking the risk, right? So yeah. you, like, uh, calculated the situation and you will to take the risk. <laughs> so it seems so. Ivan, one of my friends got involved with something like that. He saw a man uh, uh, was beating her, his wife and he stopped to help her and then you know the police came and the woman said I'm happy with my husband <laughs> uh, it happens in Russia like every day many times a day so I mean that whenever anyone try to interfere inside the family situation he will be the victim after all so that's why yeah. people are afraid of do this yeah, Sarah, please. Yes, I am from Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. and uh, we always interfere to help people. And for example, if there there are if there is a car accident, you will see people gather and help the injured people and rush them to the hospital. Because sometimes it's um, we don't just wait for the ambulance to arrive. Sometimes they take they takes much time, so it's better to. Uh, give a hand and um, help that person. And also if there, there is any fight or they always interfere actually. Yes. yes. Yeah, good. We've had, yeah. Uh, okay. we had a, an interesting uh, stays, uh, case study done over here 
Uh, does everyone know what a, an electronic defibrillator is? It's a um, device that yeah. shocks your heart and, and starts your heart after you stop. It stops from a heart attack. Yep. Uh, those are in some buildings. Those are mounted on the wall for emergency use by anyone. And they've done a study that if, if a guy just in your workplace, if he just fell down with a heart attack and he's dying and he says, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And there's a defibrillator on the wall right there that anybody can use. Most people would not use it to save that person's life because they would think I'm not trained in how to use that. I better not do anything rather than do something wrong. He's going to die anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. he's dying. He can't breathe. He's dying. And so a lot of people would, wouldn't use a safety, a life-saving device right there to try to save this person out of fear that they, they aren't trained how to do it or might do it wrong. In reality, I found out that device, you take it and, and you open it up and turn it on, it speaks what to do. <laughs> It'll tell you what to do in verbal instruction. So anyone could do it and save the guy's life. But most people would say, I'm not trained in that. I'm not going to do anything. Then so why did why yeah, these kids? Yeah. Since why have the locks? Yeah. <laughs> because we don't train people how to use that. We don't train people. This tells you what to do. You don't need training. Just grab it, open it up, and it'll tell you what to do. We don't train people how to use these things on the wall. Yeah, you should so, just follow the instructions. It, it's stupid, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me ask one. Leila, are you trained to, like, for, how we call it, first medical help? CPR? Unfortunately, no. I was thinking about it. Okay. I mean, I know some things, but I'm not good at it. So you don't no, have like a certificate for that, so you are not a boy. No, no, no. As a teacher, I, in fact, we should have trained, but no. Mm -hmm. Jacques, what about you? Do you have a certificate? Or certificate? Yes, I'm trained. Every yeah. year or every two two years, I I do a small uh, short course mm -hmm. to do the CPR and to work the defibrillator. In our campground, we have seven or eight defibrillators, just in case. Uh. Sergey, what about you? Are you trained for this? Medical, you're, you're muted, Sergey. Yes, I have trained uh, when I work as a manager in uh, in a workshop, uh, but now not. <laughs> so, so what do you mean now? You forgot everything? Oh, what? <laughs> Ten years, yes, I, I, I forgot the, uh, a lot of actions. How, how many uh, breezes, uh, how do uh, artificial breeze, but yeah, I see. I don't so remember. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, like the worst part, I guess, because I was trained for CPR, like in my military academy, like 15 years ago. And I never like, uh, <laughs> what was it called? Rebrush this knowledge. Never. So I forgot everything, but I still have this certificate and I'm like required to help. So I'm afraid if I, if ever <laughs> I would need to help someone. <laughs> Teacher, you, you raise the hand. Yeah, Yvonne and Gerard, you can check me on this. In the old days, CPR was had two parts. You would breathe into their mouth to move their lungs to get air through the lungs. And then you would push on the chest to get the heartbeat to move the blood. So it was breathing and blood assist. And then later, modern day, after AIDS, we found out that most people were reluctant to put their mouth on someone else's mouth. So I think modern CPR doesn't do the mouth to mouth anymore. It only does the chest compressions because they felt that people are more likely to try to save a life with chest compressions only than if they had to also do mouth to mouth breathing and resuscitation. Is that true, Gerard? But it's not compulsory. You can do what you go. It's better to do the um, insufflation of air. Okay, you know, so you cannot do get AIDS by the saliva. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, but people people panic. Okay, mm -hmm. so so if you don't want to do mouth to mouth, at least you can do chest compressions, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. still might save their life. 
Yeah. I know that in Russia we don't do this inhalation mouth to mouth. Don't do this. Oh, we okay. do the yeah. chest compression. And uh -huh. many times there are some ribs broken because of these compressions in many cases. So it's a reason why many people sue you after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Sarah, you wanted to add something? Just I want to answer the next one. Ignorant to plus paradox. Yep. Ah, okay. So please, yes, explain us. Let's go on. <laughs> we, we stuck on this on this one forever. So it's please, okay. This tell us what yeah. is ignorant bliss paradox. This is a matter of um, testing your friends on a matter of death or life. So imagine that you are hanging off in um, in a high tower, and uh, you are about to to fall. Okay, from the edge. Then you call three of your friends and ask them for help. Okay. And when they rushed out to save you, uh, they hesitated and become scared to, to pull you up, okay? Because they might uh, just yank all for themselves. So they just step back and suddenly just you fall. And, but you didn't uh, die, you left. And then when, once you face them, do you just be blind and ignorant as, as something didn't happen, or just for, uh, or just uh, what do you call, uh, walk a, walk away, walk on? I mean, so continue your life and forget about your friends and find another friends. Yeah, it's uh, inter actually you know before this movie, I never heard about this ignorant bliss paradox in this warning, so it's uh, kind of new for me. Gerard, have you known about this? No. I don't trust people, actually. It's really <laughs> hard to trust people when it's come to death or life matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in, in the movie, there was a very unrealistic set, I would say. This high tower, this some, something strange, you know. So I can provide like many examples like this, you know, from some, you know, Mexican gang threat you with a gun and you call your friends so come here right <laughs> something like this as they, as they did not show so should i trust them after all or not sergey what do you think by russian moral should we have them like a friends after this uh i'm afraid but uh, i i can't <laughs> i can't shoot my friends <laughs> <laughs> no no i mean you know i mean that i call you right and say that you know someone is going to shoot me so i need your gun please come here and you never came so what <laughs> uh, i think uh, i think in russia uh more uh, more share and asia uh principle of relationships when we support each other uh when uh, we don't support the law we support uh, our relatives our friends yeah, exactly. Fam family is more than law, right? If I need to break a law to support my family, there is no question. I do this, right? So, in, mo in most of the cases. But the ignorant bliss paradox is about another thing. So, so I called you. You never show, right? You never gone. So, and now I have a paradox. So I now know that you are a traitor, or <laughs> or should I should I call you at all, or better don't know about this, you know? So to have you as a friend and never check you. Never check you if you will come. So what is better? <laughs> Leo, Fair obviously. weather friends, right? <laughs> Leo, do you understand this? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, before Sarah explained the paradox, I was thinking ignorance, lack of knowledge, bliss, happy, paradox. What does it mean? So I got it now. And I don't know what to say because friends, friends i mean that's what friends are for to help yeah yeah but it's not about this this paradox is not about friends it's about us should we check our friends in hard way or should we or better to be you know bliss about them Giraffe, please. Do, do you know that the saying that says ignorance is a blessing you know see some <laughs> If your partner is cheating on you and you don't know, it's not a problem. Exactly. exactly. So the, it related to the saying, this uh, ignorant bliss paradox. If you don't know your friends, it, it is being help selfish, you. Gerard. <laughs> well, but Leila, look at this uh, in another way. You know, so you 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 never call it your friend in death and life situation, right? Right. So you did not break this friendship, right? So you are still friends. 
you are happy, your friend is happy, and nothing happened, right? You survived. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's not for me. Yeah, the point is, let's say you've got some friends, you're happy with them, you go through life and y'all enjoy time, good times together. But now go back in time and find out that, whoa, they would have let me die in this situation. Now, knowing that they would let you die in that situation, would you go back and be friends with them for the next 10 years and enjoy yeah, good yeah. times? Or would you cut them off and say, you're not really my friend? You know, no, no, so no. That's, that's, that's the paradox. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> As usual, teacher Lee. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I don't know the answer. What is better? Sure. But I think the likelihood of uh, saving this friend, it's quite, it was quite risky for the friends to help. It's not like, it depends on the situation. If you can do, really help easily, but if you are risking to your life, it's normal. People care about their lives. But it's it's about, you know, in, in Russia, we say if you, uh, <laughs> if your braveness or your courage depends on the size of your enemy, why you call this braveness? So if the if this it's if it's about the risk degree, why do you call it uh, friendship? If, you know that it's like in um, war movies. You know we we don't leave anybody behind. How yeah. stupid is on many times saving one person? Uh, five person are killed for what? For saving yeah. a person who is almost dead. Yeah. That's a yeah. waste of resources, a waste of lives. Uh, from um, civil point of view, from a peaceful peace time point of view, it's a waste of resources for sure. But for soldiers, they, it's it's a part of their uh, moral, right? But you, they are going you, to you, the, they are going to die, and the the, the soldier uh, injured is yeah. almost dead. Yeah. What's so the we point? are all we are go all going to die for Gerard. Why? Because Gerard will die for us, right? If we are in danger. So that's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> Sergey, what do you think? Is it uh, about soldiers, right? So we all go, all going to die to save one guy who is going to die anyway. Is it the right decision or, or not? You know, it's a typical situation. Sniper shoots someone, right? <laughs> like save Private Ryan. So should we try to save him or not? <laughs> but uh, they're so soldiers, and they they. Uh this the war is a uh, bad job for them but they have to go to die i think <laughs> yeah so for soldiers it's a part of their job right we go there yeah yeah <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. well, in, in this situation safe private uh, ryan should we all risk our lives to save a guy who most likely dead already but considering his uh, family situation, he has lost already his family member, so he is the only one. So, yes, it, from their point of view, uh, saving uh, that particular guy is really important. <laughs> Maybe well, from the piece, yeah. From my perspective, I I may find. Uh, so difficult to walk on a car, you know, it may hurt me, but it, it doesn't matter to them. They can taste bullets and everything. Uh, their world is completely different. So they can uh, taste so many pain, uh, much more pain than me. So. <laughs> but maybe they don't like to, maybe they are not going to do. Should you, can you forg forgive them after or not? So it's a hard question, I guess. So what I like about this paradox, about this three that we mentioned. So we are a small group of people who know each other for a long time, right? And we still <laughs> have different uh, view on these paradoxes. So how can the whole humankind with so many different people, you know, liberals included, so <laughs> how can we find the one solution for this? It's just impossible. So it's a kind of dividing questions, right? So questions that we never find solution, never will agree. Isn't it a definition of paradox, teacher? Uh, Just a question that we will never find a solution, no? Yeah, kind of like that. A paradox is when it's kind of hard to explain it. It's something that shouldn't be possible, but it seems to be possible or vice versa. Yeah, it's... 
<laughs> I see. Yeah, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Okay, I hope you you enjoyed the discussion. I did. So let's go to the movie back. So <laughs> let's go to this uh, from the good paradoxes. Let's go to the bad paradoxes <laughs> from from the movie. Vova, could you please read the next paragraph? Uh, when thought of the apocalypse, thought experiment, how did the students react? Mm -hmm. To refuse to participate, Zimit had to sit in his topic student to participate. James and Peter are lovers and will go to Cornell University together next year. He seems rich and spoiled and not as smart as she is. She, she is top student in the class. Uh, a a plus. A plus. The first student to ever do so in Zimit's class. Mm -hmm. Zimit threatens. 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 Better with a great education. Reduction. Reduction. Yeah. If she doesn't participate, uh, then he threatens mm -hmm. to love us James great as well. Okay, do you understand this, this paragraph? Do you have any questions about this? What is, what is threaten, right? Threaten is like of to make a, I don't know, menace, make a danger, right? To, to say, if you don't do this, I will do something for you. Like, I will worse the situation for you, right? So if you will not, will not participate in my experiment, I will take you a bad grade and you will be expelled from Cornell University. Okay. Teacher Lee, please. Can you imagine a student in a class of philosophy, a thinking, a critical thinking class? Can you imagine a student saying, I refuse to even participate in this ridiculous uh, experiment, you know? <laughs> Duh, you know, I refuse. I refuse to participate. It's, it's mentally offensive to me. Oh, gosh, come on. <laughs> I understand your point. Giraffe, please. But Pet Petra can do that. You know, you know why? Because she's having sex with a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so she can threaten him even more. Good point. Yeah. Another yeah. good point, yes. Well, what is a top student? What does it mean? She's a top student. Uh, the best. The best one, right? Maybe there are many of them, but she, she is uh, among the best. What mean? What does mean A plus plus? Mm. The best grade? Yeah, it's kind of A, kind of the best. Like B, it's you know like plan B, right? So second second option and C yeah. like this. So A, it means the best one, and plus mean you know super duper the best one, I guess. Yeah, let's say uh, from 92 to 100 is an A. Mm -hmm. If you've got a 92, you're an A minus. Mm -hmm. If you get a 95, you're an A. But if you got 100%, that's an A plus. That means you did the best of the best of the best. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Jihan, do you know what is Cornell University? Why it's important? How we call this university? Mm, I don't know exactly Cornell University. It's just <laughs> famous. Yeah, yeah. But there, there was a kind of a name, Ivory League or something like this, right? Uh-huh, yeah. So few universities, they uh, form the Ivory League. So I am from Ivory League University, me and I'm posh, I'm rich. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What, 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 what was the word for this for Shakespeare? Be lie, lie and behold or something like this? Lo and, and behold, yeah. Lo <laughs> and behold, I'm from, from Cornell University. That's right. It's <laughs> prestigious. It's prestigious. prestigious. Yeah. Okay, very good. very good. Okay, the last one. No, not the last one. Describe the setup for the apocalypse soul experiment. What sounds? Would you like to read this? The setup for soul experiment. I have it on, on the screen. Yes, a World War Three nuclear holocaust. What does it mean holocaust? Mm. 
to kill people in bulk? Kind of. Do you remember we discussed massacre, right? It seems massacre. similar to me. Teacher, is it massacre? Mass massacre. massacre. It's a disaster. A, a large scale massacre or disaster. A catastrophe. Yeah. 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 Like genocide, right? Can we genocide. Say genocide. Genocide. Similar. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember that Holocaust, you know, if you don't say nuclear Holocaust, just Holocaust, it's always related to Jews in World War II. Right? Now, that, yes. that one, we use a capital H. Capital H Holocaust refers to the Jews in World War II. I see. With a, with a lowercase h, it just means disaster or catastrophe. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Wasans, would you like to continue, please? Yes, uh, so in this uh, experiment, uh, the teacher made them to assume there is a World War III nuclear holocaust is happening. So they have a uh, thousand bunkers, uh, 10 people uh, can stay inside and has the stuff, food and everything enough for one year. Mm -hmm. So they can stay inside. Um, okay, one student leaves in this selection of 10 of 21. So they need, so the resources are limited, right? They need to choose who will a consumer of these resources. Yeah, this is uh, the letter C is about, right? There's 21 students, only 10 get to go in the bunker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So let's, uh, I don't know, let's discuss what will be a fair way to choose <laughs> people for this bunker. So what what, what was uh, the way in the movie, Yosans? Could you explain this? Each of them possess a special talent. Uh, they are from different uh, professions. They analyze their ability uh, and uh, to save the human human in the future. Once after the uh, Holocaust is over, uh, they are analyzing the 10 people's ability to repopulate the uh, humanity. Yeah. Okay. Actually, col col colon colonize, right? Colonize uh -huh. the earth from the, from the scratch, right? Yeah, also, so they have to consider, uh, they have to consider their ability to survive inside uh, their contribution inside the bunker for mm -hmm. one year. Yeah. So what was written on these cards? So, for example, give us a few examples. Somebody uh, is a wine maker, somebody is a poet, somebody is an architectural engineer. Mm -hmm. So many professions. So, you know, in, in Russia, when we introduce ourselves, we always say, like I'm Ivan, I am I don't know a carpenter. You know, it's always second fact about me. So we don't notion that I'm a father of you know, I don't know of two, right? Or I am a Orthodox, or I am a, like my nationality or something. We always say like name and then profession. But I learned that it's uh, not everywhere is so. So when I was in Spain in Andalusia, for instance, they say. For instance, I am, um, I don't know, I am Jose and I like to drink uh, red wine. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> very, I'm uh, exaggerating, but it was kind of like this. So <laughs> I learned that there are many ways for this. So what do you use in Saudi Arabia, Jihan? What do you, what is the important part of your self-identity? Profession or, I don't know, religion or what? Um, we only um, say the first and the last names. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe from which region exactly you are. That's yeah. it. So you don't mention profession? No, not at all. Profession? Unless no. the, yeah, unless they ask him. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> What's that thought about you in India? How it, how it works? What do you say? Yeah. I am from, I don't know, Temple of God. <laughs> of <Samson. laughs> mm. When yeah, you introduce yourself, do you say that I am Vasans, I am a, I don't know, a postman or something? Yeah, uh, but uh, it doesn't, you know, it is irrelevant to that situation. Maybe I would uh, 
post myself as a computer engineer or something mm-hmm. it may it may increase the uh, my chance to <laughs> live inside the bunker right? <laughs> yeah, I understand, but I'm not talking about the, you know, bankers, about this situation, okay. but in general, you know, you are in the bar, you are meeting new people, what, what do yeah. you say? Then, then I would uh, say that I'm from the postal department. Yeah. yeah, would you mention, I don't know, your religion or your, I don't know, age or something else? What do you like to drink? No, nobody would uh, say their uh, religion or uh, their caste, something like that, unless they are from the upper, uh, you know, upper level. Upper class, like I'm a, yeah. I don't know, a boss of, don't know, something, yeah. really big, yeah. boss of the temple, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Josh, what about you in Catalonia? Do you use occupation or what? No, we say the place, uh, our uh, complete name and the place we are, the city or the village we are living in, and that's it. <laughs> It's interesting. Mm. As far as I know, Americans close to us, right, teacher? The occupation define you. Right. Yeah, normally, if we introduce ourselves, normally we just give our name. But mm-hmm. if they say, what kind of work do you do, then we give our profession. But we normally just give our name in an introduction. Yeah, but I mean, I, yes, I understand what you're talking about. But in general, you know, so self-identity, right? Who I am. Yeah, profession. Yeah, yeah. yeah. who I am. It's profession, yeah. right? It's not yeah. about yeah. what I drink. It's not about right. What... <laughs> right. What, what I like. They yeah. had a nice uh, joke in Spain. I learned in, I, I, I don't forget, in, if I don't forget in Granada, they say, first we say our name, then we say, what is our favorite Saint Santa Maria church? <laughs> so something like this. So it's, mm. it's kind of a pun, but an interesting one. <laughs> okay, so they have occupations written on their table, uh, on their pieces of paper or something, so they know who they are. Sergey, who is the... Uh, If you were in charge of selling people, who is useless, in your opinion? Uh, but not all opera. I like the opera and the ba- ballet and dancer. If we saw the ballet dancer, I took uh, ballet de- dancer. It's important for me. Okay. But uh, I uh, refuse the electrician because I am electrician. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, but it's it's difficult questions because uh, uh, following the plot, uh, each person has uh, several points of these cards, and the profession, and disaster, and the illness, and the speciality, uh, like a gay or. Uh... Uh, it it was a it was a second and third experiment. In the first one, they had only professions, you know, to a simple experiment. So you only right. occupation. Yeah, but uh, uh, follow the lo- logical way, we have to choose uh, electrician, carpenter, builders, and manager. It's all not not florist, uh, not opera, uh, <laughs> opera uh, singer. <laughs> but movie tried to convince us that uh, in opposite, right? That you know, you have to choose a poet, an opera singer, yeah, but a fashion I... designer. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought about it uh, because uh, the uh, plot uh, writers uh, pushed me to please go to the poet, go to the florist. It's a good way, but I don't agree. And uh, I think that uh, we have to have balance. And eighty uh, percent is a useful ma- uh, useful <laughs> people, and eighty percent. Uh, people for uh, relaxant dancers and uh, singers. It's uh, my opinion. I'm maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Mm. Ivan, you muted. Sorry. Don't you think it will be hard to push out the engineer and engineer uh, <laughs> and put a poet? You know, you will suffer from this uh, decision after, right? When you need to colonize the planet. How? <laughs> We sent the two poems. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard, please. Um, you, see a, you see a poet uh, like a person who is only able to write poems. But a poet must be a person who is able to write very well with a good grammar. Uh... Usually, usually <laughs> poets, yes, because they, to, do, to be a good poet, to, to make your yeah. living, you must be very good knowing the language and 
apply I, to I, the language. I, I have no argue with this. So yes, but how grammar is important for the post nuclear apocalypse? But that's that's only one thing, you, you know. Only um, you know, a part of the one part of the reality. If you would say teacher Lee, teacher Lee teaches English. Okay, that's not that important. But if we say teacher Lee is an electrical engineer, so that looks much better, you know. <laughs> you 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 just say it. It looks much better. Much yes. better. Yes. It looks it's better. What I'm <laughs> the information we have is very limited, and saying a person is a poet doesn't define this person <laughs> to me. But yeah. even being just a poet, he can do many more things than writing poem. Poem. You only think a poet is able to write poems, but he knows how to write properly the grammar and knows the language much must know the language very well, and that's important if you want to teach. Uh, the yeah, but you, in the post uh, post nuclear apocalypse, you know, you cannot eat grammar, you cannot live in grammar, so you need someone else, right, to build houses, to make things. Yes, but you have <laughs> other people as well, yeah. and everybody can do many things. Not one person can do one thing. One. one but Gerard, let's let's imagine the situation. So there is a bunker, right, bunker with uh, only ten places, and you asked Gerard, what you are doing the best. And the first thing you say, I'm a poet, right? It means that the, the rest of your skills are less uh, significant than this one. But that's what Simit says. Simit says what, what Sushin is better, you know? He says the part of reality he wants you to, he wants that you do, you know, you know, which is more convenient for him because he's playing. <laughs> and, and one thing that he did in scenario one was he said, I'm one of the people to choose from. But what's your skill? You don't know my skill. I might be useful. I might not. You have to take a risk if you want to include me or exclude me. So that's kind of scary right there. <laughs> well, it's it's adds something to an experiment, right? Sometimes yeah, we yeah. don't know. Sometimes we don't know about people, right? So yeah. they can be like a dark horses, right? We don't see them. We don't know anything about them, right? Jihan, what do you think about the poet? Should we take him to the bunker? Um, no, I don't think we should take him. <laughs> <laughs> but if he's a good father, you know, and um, I don't know, a caring lover or something else. <laughs> but they can help like the human race. So, <laughs> so in general, the, uh, this movie tried to convince us, right, that um, these uh, people without how to call this hard skill and soft skill let's put this way this way it's not a um, like scientific definition but let's put this in this way right hard skill let's call hard skill people who can build houses and you know uh, make things and make food in post nuclear world and soft skill you know let's call this opera singers fashion designers gender study professors or <laughs> all this the rest yeah. We're running low on time, Yvonne, so let me just mention this real Please. quickly. Please. So there's there's three scenarios that they they study. The first scenario is straightforward. Your profession. That's the only decision to be made. Is this profession useful or not useful to restart the earth? In the second scenario, he adds sexual orientation and health conditions. This person's very smart, but they're going to die in two years, you know, or this person's gay or, you know, so he adds a little complication in the second where you've got to weigh the, the profession versus the health condition and personal biases against sexual orientations, gay or, or lesbian or whatever. And then in the third one, that's Petra's personal scenario where it's a liberal's dream. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I got the impression that movie trying to sell that this movie trying to sell us this liberal dream. I had this yeah, impression. Yeah. Yeah. But after we learned, as uh, Gerard mentioned, that it's all about you know this romantic triangle between mm -hmm. teacher, this uh, rich boy, and first Petra. class student. Yeah. Yeah. So it's undermined the, uh, you know, the value of movie at all to me. <laughs> so. but, 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 but let's go back to scenario one just a moment. Please. 
So the first scenario is, is pretty straightforward, except Zimmet is an unknown. Yep. And he kind of undermined himself when he immediately shot the poet in the head. And then later he killed all of the unselected people, a mercy killing, euthanasia. Yeah. That that kind of gave the the nine people, you know, should we include this guy? He's a nut. This guy's crazy. So they excluded him because of what he did. Mm -hmm. And it, it turned out he was necessary for their survival. So because they excluded him, they couldn't get out of the bunker at, after one year and they all suffocated. So he kind of introduced an unknown element there that caused all of them to die in number one. So in number two, scenario two, Tisha, they had can, to... can, can I interrupt you for a moment? Uh -huh. I think that it's an, we, we can treat it like, you know, like a, every human is kind of a package, right? So he brings something bad and something good. So this guy showed his bad side and they decided to throw his away, right? It's like Trump, you know, he's a jerk. Let's, so he cannot do anything good, right? So they yeah. decided immediately. It's like an analogy I, I have. Yeah. So in the second scenario, they knew that he had the exit code. Mm -hmm. So in the second scenario, they had to select him. So, so, and now it's like, would you want to live with this guy for one year in a bunker? Well, it didn't work out very well. And they ended up rejecting the guy. So he opened the exit door and, and this nuclear flame that apparently just sitting out there flushes in and kills them all again. So in the first two, everyone dies. <laughs> and he's the reason both times. <laughs> Uh, and it's a lucky, the, they are very lucky that they have a person with identical memory, right? But I yeah. never understood why they need a soldier for this. Gerard. Now, one thing, yes. but uh, you know, uh, every iteration is different. So the code number, the code number from the second iteration shouldn't work in the third iteration. You are right. totally unrelated. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So just a coincidence. <laughs> yes. That's a goof, I think. That's a goof. Uh, teacher Lee, we interrupted you about the third uh, iteration, right? I didn't talk about the third one yet, but that's where Petra says, let me choose all the people myself. No vote, just trust my judgment. Mm -hmm. So she picked the 10 most unlikely people. Mm -hmm. Now, what I didn't like about this was, yeah, she, she basically said, we 10 people, we're going to party and enjoy our life our last year on earth and to hell with the human race when we're yeah. done we're all going to die we know it that's okay we don't give a damn about the rest of the people so 10 percent of this population that's going to rebuild they throw away 10 percent of the chances for humanity to survive so to me they were just purely selfish yep like liberals today tend to be. But it's uh, pretty much my impression about modern society, right? So yeah. we're going to enjoy our lives. We are child free. We are going to consume everything. We are spend our lives like <laughs> lords. And hell knows what will happen to humankind. We don't care. It's not yeah. our problem. Let yeah. someone else take care about this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and I don't know, should we discuss the last part about this triangle, this romantic, it's a, another disgusting part, I think. <laughs> My only question at the end was, did he commit suicide or not? I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Let's ask someone. Jihan, what do you think? Or Sarah, what do you think? Did he commit suicide at the end? Mm, yes, I think he commits. Uh, he committed this suicide because we can hear the gunshot. But after that, it showed him returning home again. Mm, after the he, he returned home three times. One time he returned home and he sat around looking at the ceiling. The mm -hmm. second time he returned home, he looked at a gun and we heard a gunshot. And then the third time he returned home, it didn't show what he did. Uh -huh. So. So I, I don't know what it was trying to tell us. Maybe it was trying to tell us there's three possible endings. 
One, he's just des despair, hopeless, depressed. One, he commits suicide. And another one, he returns home. And we don't know what his life was like after that. So maybe it was given three possible endings for his life. I, I don't know. I <laughs> You're muted, Ivan. Sorry. So if you ask me, I enjoyed the first part of the movie. It was pretty much okay, but then it took it, it came to total nonsense, if you ask me. <laughs> and what and what I did not like at all, uh, you know, sometimes it was very slow. So sometimes they show the process which is already understandable. We know exactly they, they will eat this, I don't know, turtles right in the bunker. So yeah, so why why to show this to us? I, I I can understand it, you know, much easier. So that's why I, I didn't like the from the middle. But what about you, Sarah? Did you enjoy the movie? Would you recommend it to watch? <laughs> yes, I like it. I just a snake. We just think if I were in the same situation, what I'm gonna do. So <laughs> I would do the same. <laughs> So if, uh, do you think that this scenario three, when Petra chose to everyone, is kind of realistic? So it uh, it's, uh, could happen in some yeah, circumstances. It's fiction, it's realistic fiction, I think. Fantasia. <laughs> okay, Gerard, please. I like the, the end because James proved that being smarter than the teacher thought. Maybe James wasn't a good student, but that doesn't mean he was a stupid. And another thing, Petras, I think she uh, made up this uh, scenario to look very liberal uh, scenario, but it, she, she did that on purpose to uh, screw up the, the teacher, to take revenge because the teacher wanted to punish James mm -hmm. because he, the, the teacher didn't accept that she was with James. She thought he was better, but all, all, all the same, he, his relationship was something impossible and unrealistic. Exactly, Gerard, you mentioned an uh, important point. So all three experiments, they were rigged, right, by yeah. teacher. He had a cough, he had a, he had an intent to make experiment words for, for a James. boy, for, mm -hmm. for James, right? So uh, to add injury to, to, to an offense, right? So how we call this? <laughs> Yeah. In, insult to injury. Insult yeah. to injury. Yeah. After after it was a stupid experiment, we had uh, some nonsense <laughs> more. So she gave him the same medicine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But at least I, I, what I liked in the movie is that we learned about this ignorant bliss paradox. <laughs> 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 An interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Vasans, what do you think? What should we learn else from this movie, if there is any? So, what's the moral? What we can learn from this? Um, I don't know. Uh, whatever the circumstances is, try to build the humanity. They, they are just uh, ready to sacrifice their own life in order to save their friends. You know, when the teacher was fighting towards uh, them. Yeah, that's what they are trying to. Yeah, and I think that circumstances in these experiments, they were pretty mild, right? They had everything, they don't need to work, and it's only one year, right, in, inside the bunker, so it was not hard, so it was for snowflake generation, right? <laughs> you don't need to build anything, we built everything for you, just go there and consume, right? So, <laughs> do nothing. <laughs> okay, good one. I actually enjoyed the discussion. Yes, very, very, very good. Thank you very much for this. But guys, I think that we have to return to Star Trek. We did not do this for ages already, right? <laughs> <laughs> we started to forget how Spock looks like. Jihan, do you know who is Spock? Sorry? <laughs> do you know who Spock is? No. Okay. Sarah, what about you? No idea. Who's okay. Spock? So, you, oh, you see... Oh. <laughs> yeah. it's is he a character? <laughs> okay, you will know. You will know by the by the next weekend. <laughs> let me let me promise you this. <laughs> but guys, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but yes. there is something you didn't mention, which is really important. Please. Uh, Mr. Smith did all that things because he had the affair with uh, Petra. He loves her, so he just did that to prove 
to her that James is not suitable for her and he wants her to, to see the, what can I say, the truth. So, but she doesn't care whether James is intelligent or not. She, she loves him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so love makes anything possible, right? <laughs> love rules the world. Love, love rules the world. I'm just wondering, why did she split up with uh, Mr. Zinnett? Sorry, I didn't get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why did she break up with Zimmet? I mean, they were lovers, I guess, for a year. Why did she break up? She could have stayed there and gone to college in Jakarta, yeah. but she wanted to go to Cornell with James instead of staying there with him. He was much smarter than James. But Okay, I have a I have a hypothesis. I have my own idea. So because in Cornell there are many smart professors, with, <laughs> so <laughs> she can find another one. <laughs> but but his but but Zimmet's concern was actually kind of a good one. He felt that James wasn't smart enough, wasn't good enough for her. Yep. So he was looking at an intellectual yep. equality. And he said, you know, Petra, you can do better than this rich, spoiled kid. <laughs> and her answer is, I can do better, but I need his money, right? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. She didn't seem to love him. At the very beginning of the movie, she didn't really seem to love James that much. Yeah. yeah. She said, I'm leaving, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, Bye -bye. I didn't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I see your point. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Sarah, you know, that's why we like to have a woman perspective on this. You know, we almost missed <laughs> this detail. Thank you very much for, for pointing us to this. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for discussion. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Hope you too. Thank you, Teacher Lee, for your support, for the chat that I have to read now <laughs> because I missed all the, all the chat. <laughs> thank you very much. And see you next weekend. And we are going to introduce Mr. Spock to Jihan and Sarah. I guess. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. I'm curious to know who is he. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>